So let's begin with our considerations on the Pope's use and reference to our common home. He says humanity is not, a separate, it's not separate from the environment in which it lives. Rather, humanity and the natural environment are one. Then he goes on to say that the accelerating change in climate is undeniable, catastrophic and worsened by human activities, but it is also amenable to human intervention. And this he will develop as the hopeful note of his encyclical. So your challenge is to think in this thoroughly balanced way, the world is expecting you in this unique place of the planet, here in Santa Clara, to ask bold and avant-garde questions about the future. But overall, the encyclical provides a unique blend of perspectives. And we just want to briefly present six such simple perspectives. First, it affects everyone. Climate pollution and weather events do not respect borders. Now wealth, no privilege. No walls, no gated community can keep the environment at bay. So, what is at stake then is justice between people and generations. The dignity of those who inhabit the planet now and those who inhabit the planet in the future and at stake is the very possibility of human life on earth itself. Second consideration, everyone must act. We think automatically about the rulers and the several times the encyclical addresses those who have the power to decide, urging them to take responsibility for the common good, even if they have to go against the, mind, the mindset of short-term gain which dominates present-day economics and politics. But Pope Francis makes it evident that this is not a topic for experts, for technicians. This is something that affects all of us. Everyone must act, even the child who turns off lights so as to reduce electricity consumption. The third consideration is that we need to be truthful in how we go about solving this problem. We must have the courage to identify the problems. There are so very many who still deny the evident facts of what we are doing to our planet and to each other, masking the problems of concealing their symptoms. We gain nothing when we deny the impact of fossil fuels, both for good and for evil. Fourth consideration for us this afternoon, it is that we, you know, we should embrace inter integral ecology as a way of thinking about our lives on the planet. The expression integral ecology recalls ancient awareness that all living beings, human groups and systems, as well as non-human ones, that is, all of creation, are fundamentally interconnected and interrelated. Fifth consideration for us is that we should practice and take seriously the part of dialogue suggested by Pope Francis. Pope Francis insists on dialogue as the only way to confront the problems of our world and to seek solutions that are truly effective. Authentic dialogue is honest and transparent. Real dialogue would not allow particular interests of individual countries or specific groups to hijack the negotiations. And so, the sixth point of Pope Francis is that we should pray. We should pray about the COP21 meeting and we should pray about and for decisions that will be taken. Pray for the earth, pray for humanity, pray for bold decisions now for the sake of, you, of the future, of, of, the, of humanity itself and pray about the planet's future. From Silicon Valley and from Santa Clara, through the U.S. and around the world, let us learn to exercise global ecological citizenship 
having received the nature from God, the Creator as a gift and as a garden, let us bequeath it to those who come after us, not as a wilderness, but as a garden. So let us sustain humanity and the care for our common home, the beautiful planet, the garden that the Lord entrusted into our hands. Thank you, Cardinal Tocqueson, uh, for your comments, and thank you on behalf of all of Santa Clara University. Today we consider how to connect, what to do about the call of Pope Francis and your words today. What we recognize at Santa Clara University is that climate change impacts the poor the most. Climate resilience is the capacity of poor communities to absorb stresses of adverse climate effects, maintain function, and adapt to sustainable systems that prepare them for future climatic change impacts. There is a remarkable convergence, too, in this conversation. The UN Sustainable Development Goals, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, all agree a shift from fossil fuels to renewable energy and technology must happen. Santa Clara University is uniquely positioned in Silicon Valley to partner and answer these calls. We link innovation and entrepreneurship with Jesuit tradition of serving the poor and protecting the planet. One way to engage is through social entrepreneurship. Social entrepreneurship is the engine, in our view, that drives and generates climate resilience. We thank you, Cardinal Turkson, for your work in Laudato Si, Pope Francis for calling us all to address these most pressing and intimately related problems of poverty and climate change. Thank you.